So I love the Washington Post. To loved it now, love it now, loved it while I was there. The the reason I left was had nothing to do with any issues within the Post. It was that I thought there was a next step for my particular work. And, and it's hard to talk about this kind of thing because when you do, it can sound implicitly like a critique. And it isn't. The Post is one of the sentinel organizations of American journalism. We would be immeasurably poorer without it and without the Times and without these institutions that I think we are actually at this moment coming to appreciate quite, quite greatly. But, yes. But what digital media opened up was the capacity to have a broader ecosystem of content, of content that did different kinds of things in different kinds of ways. And my background, is, as Jonathan knows, is in covering policy. And I covered Obamacare when it was being passed, as well as now covering whatever happens to it next. But the thing that I, I saw when I was at the Post, uh, and, and before that too in my career, was that we were really good at telling you what happened today. My part of the post, I ran a site called Wonk Blog, was amazing at answering the question, what happened in healthcare today? What happened in the financial crisis today? What happened in education today? But when readers emailed me, they didn't actually need to know that. We were competing, well, they did need to know that, I don't want to say that, but that wasn't their main question. Oftentimes their question had to do with something that happened long ago. How did this thing that was in the bill that got passed a year ago and we hadn't covered since then work? Where did they go to just learn what was in the law itself? Not what had just happened to it, but what the thing was. All of that context needed to understand the newest developments was being lost, and it was lost for a reason. We had been on a technology in print where the central question was how do we get as much stuff as we can into our scarce resource, which was paper, right? You only had so much paper. And so you had to make these terrible decisions about everything that you would leave out. And journalism had evolved like that for a very long time. Uh, and so the deal we had made with you, the reader, was that we would just tell you all the new stuff, and it was on you to know all the stuff that had happened before. But we didn't have that problem anymore. Uh, I was like, to, to, I don't know, do you all know a website called ClickHole? <laughs> I saw the, the kids laugh. <laughs> yeah. all, all, the, all the you. <laughs> um, so ClickHole is an offshoot of The Onion that makes fun of digital journalism. And it has this great article that was called, My Time on a Whaling Ship Completely Changed My Life. <laughs> and they just copied and pasted it all of Moby Dick. <laughs> 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 and whenever I say that, it gets a big laugh. But think about that. They published all of Moby Dick as a joke <laughs> to as many people as wanted to read it. And then they published everything else they wanted to that day, videos, other text. And so in a world where we can have this persistent content, where it never has to go away, that meant you could reinvent a lot of how you, told, how you explain the news. It never had to be the case that somebody coming to a new story didn't have access to all the information they needed from before. And so going to found Vox was about trying to experiment in that space, trying to create something that had been enabled by these new technologies and that would have a role, would have a place, would serve a need for an audience within the ecosystem, not to replace anything, not even to disrupt it, but just to offer something that could be useful that maybe hadn't fully been explored yet. Well, not to disrupt it, but 